Hello everyone, welcome back. Today what I want to do is finish off a few jobs that I've started that if I don't finish off before I start growing things properly in the garden they probably won't get done this spring, this summer. So I want to get this path finished at least up to the level of that slab there. So I'm going to lift these two slabs build a little step there and then carry those along to match that height and I'm going to put the bricks in there at the opening to this entrance to the polytunnel so that's a step as well and then I can backfill that with some wood chip and then that bit's finished and later in the video I've got an upgrade for the cold frame which we'll come on to so first thing I need to do is put a better stake in here to hold this corrugated sheet back because I didn't do a very good job of that and that really needs pushing back and a proper metal stake hammering in there just to retain this until I get the IBC tank in this hole and back filled with gravel. So that's the plan. These bricks are just roughly laid in position just to get the number of bricks I need and spacings and stuff like that and they're all different <laughs> some of them are fairly new like these and some of them are best part of 100 years old I would imagine they're from walls and chimneys that I've took out of the house so proper bricks as well you can't drill these with a battery drill it's impossible you, you need to have an SDS a full power SDS drill rock hard these ones so I'm going to put this these bricks for this step on on their edge so we'll have a four inch step plus the mortar that's underneath we're a lot higher at this end so I'm going to start laying the bricks at this end on say a eight or ten millimeter bed of mortar and then as we go that way we're probably going to have to put some roof tiles or something in the mortar as we go building a course of roof tiles because if you have mortar that's more than about 10 12 millimeters it isn't uh, doesn't look very good and also it can start to uh, deteriorate quite quickly with frost and things like that so we'll build in a layer we'll build it up with some roof tiles we've got some up the top there and then this, I think, I'm going to get a straight edge and we'll put it from that slab up there, put a level on it and we'll see how high we have to build this. Wow, it's de 
receiving. So that's level. So we could get probably get another course of bricks there. Although I have got the slab to go on top of them, so that's another two inches. What I might do is just leave it like that, put the slab on at that sort of height, those bricks there, and have the path gently slope up to meet that slab. sort of height would that be? Put this brick in there at a level position. That's it. Wow. I think we can get another row of bricks there and the slab on top to be honest that's got to be it's got to be six inches isn't it so that's what's going to happen then we're going to have two courses of bricks there then the slab and then run them up to meet them up there I just want to make sure there's no loose stuff at the base of this wall, this little step. Wash that out of the way. Then get some mortar at this end and we'll make a start. Start at the highest end. This is just sharp sand, um, a 4 to 1 mix, 4 sand, 1 cement, and I want the mortar to be quite thin at this end, because it's the highest end, and then that will save me building it up more than I have to at this end. So. Because they're old bricks, I'm going to choose which side I have facing out, obviously. I haven't put any plasticizer in the cement. You could if you wanted to, but... <coughs> and you could use sharp sand if you wanted to as well. Uh, building sand, sorry, this is sharp sand. Might have a slight slope on this because it's higher at the back, but that isn't really going to be an issue. But what I want to do is just use the corrugated sheet as my guide to get a straight front. roughly to start with just get them roughly in position because I've got to squeeze them in and make it look right Ready at the front here. We're getting 
getting up to probably 15 millimeters of compo so I want to start to put a roof tile in really just to try and reduce the thickness of the mortar joint See, none of the bricks are the same. point down between them, fill them in. Which is going to take a while, so I'll get that done and I'll bring you back. brushing again in a little while um, just helps to smooth the cement out and close any little gaps that are in the in the joints makes it a bit more weatherproof I suppose so I'm going to do this step now and I'm going to build it a bit further forward I think purely because it'll give me a little bit more wriggle room to get the slabs on top and meet the height of those at the top there because I've got to put mortar between the bricks obviously so exactly the same as before
let's see how we are for level. Again, it's not critical. So, that's actually suiting what I, I prefer because it's sloping off away from the raised bed and the shed is sloping that way so that'll end up going down the gravel down the side of the IBC tank eventually so that'll do me make sure they're fully supported underneath that'll do for now so what I need to do now is lift that slab, or those two slabs really, move them out of the way and then backfill behind this with soil and uh, compact it down so that we can put a slab on top of here and the soil's holding up the back.
so as you've seen I'm having to backfill this quite a lot so I think what I'm going to do is put some rubble at the base here we've got plenty of rubble <laughs> and then some soil on the top get this next slab in um, that's about as far as I'm going to be able to go with this path for now until I lift these slabs here around the side of the shed which I'm not really feeling today feeling pretty tired to be honest it's been a busy couple of weeks down in the garden and in the house and at work so a lot going on so I'm going to get this slab back in place and then we'll do the cold frame upgrade So I've been thinking about a way that I can protect these doors from banging in the wind and have a prop that keeps them open and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, what about some gas struts? The sort of thing that you have on your car boot if you've got a hatchback. Uh, sometimes on kitchen doors and things like that. And they're just a, a cylinder that's full of uh, compressed air or something and I'm thinking they could be quite good obviously I haven't tried this yet so we're going to find out what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit one to this door here we'll see how we get on okay guys so there we go gas struts so look at that could have perhaps got some longer ones I think might have worked a bit better that's as far as it'll open but I can still get a tray of plants in and out no problem and what I can do now if I want to only have it an inch or so open with this chain I can put it around that hook, various different lengths, and keep it open for ventilation. I need to cut the chain off to length, obviously. And I'm quite pleased with that. I'll give you a close up inside. So that's the one on that end, as you can see. I had a few attempts at getting it in the right position and I just bought these on Amazon they're about it was 10 quid for four of them and they're five kilogram rated so like I say some longer ones would probably have been better and maybe I'll upgrade them at some point but so you have your fixings that you put on So that's the setup at the end of the frame. And then in the middle, because the, it's not the same build in the middle, I've had to do it differently um, and do it like that. But it works. So I need to do the uh, other side now. And then this chain's just held on with a screw and a washer and there's a hook in the base of the frame there so I just need to cut the chain off and then do that side as well at some point and it's mainly to stop the wind from taking these and blowing them 
and like I say I can I can alter the the gap that I want for ventilation so so that three inches or a bit more and go up a couple of links on the chain so about six inches I'm quite pleased with that okay guys well thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please give it a thumbs up and that's a bit more of my path done um, and upgrade on the poly on the cold frame so happy days I might see you tomorrow on the live cheers guys